We rolling, we rolling. Big hole up the middle, look out, Terrell Sun. Once he came and he practiced for us, I said, whoa, he's special. This guy was built for football. I mean, all it took was one practice to realize, like, this dude's elite. Football was just fun, you know, it was just a game to me. I loved it. Oh, it didn't take much for me to be really good at it, you know what I'm saying? So, I loved it growing up. You know, my dad, he signed me up, and ever since then, it's just been the love of my life. <laughs> I like to think I had a lot of speed, but you know, I was definitely more of a power back. And I remember having to watch film and thinking about tackling this, this monster of a, of a guy, you know, it was all, you know, ankle biting, trying to hit at the ankles, trying to hit at the thighs. Chandler, that's all there was. I felt like it was a, a school that was on the rise. Um, and then, you know, a couple years later, Hamilton showed up and um, we all know how, how that went. You finished at Hamilton High School, right? Mm -hmm. But you started at Chandler High, is I that correct? I started at Chandler, like a lot of people don't know that. A lot of Chandler people know that, but uh, a, lot of, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of Hamilton people didn't know that they, Hamilton claimed me at their own, but yeah, I went to both schools. And it was a new school, all new stuff. It was just intriguing. John Wren, he was coming from Illinois. John Wren. I'd been at three other high schools in the Chicago area and uh, done pretty well as 100 and something and 20 something. And uh, taken three different programs and made them from, they weren't successful in the championship programs. John knew to involve people in this program who were passionate about football, who loved working with kids, and uh, you know, guys that were, that were knowledgeable football guys. He ran more of a spread often, but he assured me that you know, I would be the number one guy. I laugh because I, I just remember the, the first day I saw him at football practice, I walked out here and I'm like, who in the hell is that? You know, he's sitting there in our backfield and he's bigger than any of the linemen I got. Where did the hell did he come from? And they're like, oh, that's Terrell Suggs. I'm like, from where did he go? Oh, he's that chairman. Terrell Suggs, he's out of the 45. He's out of the midfield. He's down to the 46. Once he came and he practiced for us, I said, whoa, he's special. The role John Wren played, it, it, it changed my life. You know, it was the first time I really believed in myself. Basically, the bottom line is that he was gonna be a senior and he was behind academically. And he had to pass with A's and B's, like, like 10 core classes. And I said, if this is happening, you're gonna be eligible to go to college, but you're gonna to have to do the work. I see more of you than you see in yourself. And it's my job to get all that out of you and more, and that's, and that's exactly what John did. John just saw something special in him. I've never had that kind of attention as a student before, you know what I mean? He had me in Saturday schools. And there's a couple of times when he was, you know, he, he carried the ball 30, 35 times and would get beat up, and he did not want to get up. And I'd be knocked on the door, and I know he told his brothers, don't answer it. And I'd, well, I knew where his window was, and I'd just pound down the window. I said, I'm not leaving. You're going to Saturday school because we're going to get this done, and he'd get up and he'd do it. And, and, the, and the bottom line is, is he did it. John Wren, you could pretty much say where, you know, it started for me. Trevor Johnson subs up the middle. It's a foot race. Terrell subs. Hand the ball out to him, and he's running down the field here, and three of four of these, you know. Five, seven, hundred and sixty pound white kids jumping on his back. He had like three or four on his back, and he's just carrying and running with him. He's still over to the bench, like over there. He's looking like coach. He's like, "What's so funny?" I'm like, "Dude, 
I'm like, man, I said, why you dragging little white kids around the field? <laughs> Terrell's special athletically. He's talented. He's just 17 years old. He's got a great future ahead of him. And ahead for Terrell and the Huskies. Tonight's first round playoff encounter with the Highland Hawks. We got in the state playoffs in the first round. We played Highland and Fitzpatrick was the quarterback. You know, Fitz, was, he was a year younger than us, but he was lighting it up. You know what I mean? He, uh, he had beat us once that year. We got ahead seven to nothing and I, and I didn't play my defense because I needed him to run the ball so much. I mean, he was beat up and run the ball. But we put him in for two plays on defense and he got two sacks. And I said, okay, <laughs> that's, you know, that's where he belongs. Being a local guy and him being a local guy, you see his name and you see his highlights, you see it dominating um, high school sports. And, and it was so unique to see a running back that big and that powerful and that fast he played the brand of football that I, as a as an old head, as an office lineman, that you appreciate. We just started a program, and because of his success, it just put Hamilton on the map. Let's be honest. You know, we practice every week to play Chandler, and I think our kids understood by the time we played him last game of the year that how important it was. Early on, I would kind of say it wasn't a rivalry because we won every year. But all I can say is I never lost to Chandler. In the past few years, it's, it's been Chandler that's been dominating and they've been winning, you know, state titles. I guess you could say the rivalry kind of started when I switched, but it's kind of evened out over the years, so it made it kind of fun. For Terrell, terrorizing defenses has been easy and fun. For his head coach, John Wren, the highly recruited seniors' exploits have been nothing short of a My first offer was actually the University of Arizona. Weird. Weird, right? They, were, they showed extreme amount of interest in my junior year before I transferred to Hamilton. I and mean, he was my host when I went down there, Bobby Wade. And I, like, looked up to Bobby. He was really why I considered going to U of A, like, so heavy, because he had one player of the year before me in high school, you know, did Vista kid. And um, honestly, besides Reggie Bush, I've never seen a better high school player. I love to hear him talk like that because I feel the same exact way. Exactly why when he was coming down to Arizona, you know, I'm the first one raising my hand trying to get in, trying to get the host him, you know, because he was that type of guy. This was in my junior year and it's before, you know, everything had taken off. It got crazy after a while, you know, I mean, Oklahoma, I mean, you talk about any school in the country really wanted him at the time when they saw how big he was and talented he was and he could have gone pretty much anywhere he wanted to. You know, Udell was, was high up there too. This is one of my great, my great uh, nightmares that Terrell Suggs wasn't a Washington Husky. We had three guys slated for a visit. One was McClintock High School's uh, Terry Johnson, goes by Tank, right? Tank Johnson. Uh, McClintock was my high school, so I was all in on Terry Johnson. Another was Marquise Cooper. We lost Marquise to a tragic accident and still missed Marquise. But what a wonderful kid and what a great player. He was a third round pick. And the third was Terrell. Terrell was coming on this same visit. And at the 11th hour, the administration at uh, Washington said because C Terrell had not passed his SAT yet, that he couldn't come on the trip. And I'm like, wait a minute, he's gonna have way more chances to do this. We're gonna bring him on this trip because he's coming with his buddies. I couldn't get the university to budge. And I promise you, it's one of the great mistakes the University of Washington ever made. Not because Terrell was a superstar player, he's gonna be an NFL Hall of Famer, uh, but because Terrell deserved the chance to be able to t take the opportunities uh, to get the more seasoning for the test and, and be able to pass it, which he ultimately did. But what a scene that would have been to have Marquise, Tank, and Terrell Suggs at Washington. I might still be there. <laughs> you know, he came and coached at the Ravens for a little bit. He was like, biggest mistake I made, it wouldn't have changed anything. But I, I love to bring that up and use that against him. Though. I mean, I actually thought he was going to Tennessee. <laughs> Phil Fulmer was the head coach at the time. But they kept saying he was going to play running back. 
Oklahoma and Tennessee, they wanted me to play running back. Uh, Arizona, only one was like, well, we'll let you fill it out. We'll recruit you as an athlete. He was beat up at the end of the year. You know, he realized, man, he goes, I'd rather do the hit and then get hit. It's oddly enough, ASU was one of the last schools. Not to be anything negative at all here toward Terrell, because he did a phenomenal job, but he had a lot of a lot of ground to make up academically. And, and there was people in our athletic department, academic side, that weren't sure he would do that. I believe someone asked me, like, who's in your top three? And I was like, Florida State, U of A, Tennessee. And it was like, not ASU, I was like, ASU isn't recruiting me. I presented the plan that was in place and things like that to get get him where he needed to be. And, uh, and then that opened the door. Not even had two days that went by once I had declared my top three that they had was like, oh, I started getting letters and calls from ASU. And I was like, y'all a little late, you know? Like they really didn't have a chance of getting me at that point because I had felt slighted. When I went on my trip, Quincy Yancey was my host. And he was just one of the, like, the coolest dudes like I met. And then I met Eric Fields, Levi Jones. And you know, I would pretty much say the school itself didn't make a big ground. Those three guys did. This dude played running back? That's, that's what jumped out to me. I'm like, wow. So he was a running back in high school? They were cheating. When the guys came in, I mean, they would give us directions on the guys that they really want. And obviously Terrell being right down the street and gonna be a huge Arizona State star, they definitely placed their emphasis on wanting to secure him. It didn't hurt that uh, Dr. Dre's uh, album came out the weekend of my recruiting trip. And we were playing <laughs> like the whole weekend. So every day was like a big party. I would say what really got me to ASU was my dad. He was like, you know, we're gonna announce tomorrow, where are we going? And I was like, I really wanna go to Florida State. And he was like, okay, then that's where we're going. And, you know, we, we're going to Florida State. He was like, I ain't gonna be able to see your games unless they're on TV, but then that's where we're gonna go. And for me, that was a deal breaker. Now I'm gonna go off to college when I got the opportunity to go 10 minutes away and have my dad go to every game. This was just another great step and obviously everyone was extremely excited and it you know when he committed it was a little bit of a shock i get to be with my mom and my dad and my family pretty much and I, I get a great chance of playing next year so that was a big thing and also with their support i, I figured you know i owe it to them probably the best thing for them. so i guess they have my my father to thank We were roommates. This dude will like quote lines from movies and look at you like, you know what movie that is, right? And it's like, no. And how do you even remember all this? My love of movies came from is what me and my or my family, what we used to do on Friday nights. I don't know, those two guys that stand in front of that, <laughs> that store, the Clerks movie. So I remember that he was really into that Clerks movie. Tarantino, uh, you know, John Singleton, Spike Lee. Who doesn't love Scorsese? If it wasn't doing football, it was something film-wise, you know what I mean? Because I just loved it. I took to it just kind of like I did to the sport. Terrell's like wanted to be like a movie star like from the day I met him. And you got to remember the Green Mile had just come out and that was already a movie, it was a thing. He had one of his friends call me. And we were feeding her lines like, hey, this is such and such with Disney. Um, we want to we want to capitalize on your recent success. Talking about, oh, we want to give you auditions and start in the Green Mile too. He walks out to the to the main common room and he's just like, yo, I got the part, I got the part. And we're like, what are you talking about? He starts explaining and we're just laughing and we could only keep it in for a little bit before we're like, bro, we, we were lying. Skylar Fulton and Terrell had one room and the suite and then me and Andrew Walter. Like I'm the eye one out. Those guys were always on point, especially with school, they just, helped me kind of mature a little bit. 
I think Andrew came in as like the the 18 year old freshman who was really like 45 years old already. Skyler had come from you know a really really solid background. Um, Terrell and I was brand new and we were young, so like we were both 17 year old freshmen. You know, you look at him as a as a true freshman. He's got this size and he's got this body and. But you look at him, you're like, well, he's still just a little pup, right? You know, he had this this youthful look to him where it's like he has no idea like what kind of tools he has to work with. Walk me through the process. How does a great running back become one of the all-time great defensive linemen in the game? How did that process well, go? Well, when I got here, it was, a, it was a couple of linebackers here that kind of made the decision pretty easy. Uh, one of them was Eric Fields. You uh -huh. know, he was a dominant uh, outside linebacker here. Right. And I saw him in practice, and he, he hit people pretty hard. Uh, Mason Unk was another one, really good one, but the uh, hands-down decision was Adam Archuleta. He was an undersized linebacker, but he was dominant. He said he didn't want to get hit by guys like me. Well, I don't know if I necessarily believe that because he'd been running over guys like me his entire career. He was grown when he was a freshman, so I'm sure a lot of guys took, uh, made business decisions <laughs> during those games. You knew from the moment he walked, you know, he got on campus, and the moment he started practicing, this guy was built for football. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to listen into the conversation when uh, it got to a point where maybe Bruce Snyder was trying to tell Terrell, hey, I, I want you to play defense. Is he gonna play defensive end? Is he gonna play fullback, tight end? Mike, what are you gonna do? Well, we had Todd Heap, who was an amazing tight end, first round, you know, all pro tight end. You had Steven Trejo, who was our um, fullback that year, who went on, played in the NFL. And then we also had a fullback in our class, Mike Carney, who went on playing NFL. And, and Terrell just was like, I'm gonna play defensive end. And immediately we get the camp and he's balling. And he's going against Levi Jones, who becomes a first round draft pick. He was an offensive tackle, but he was very athletic. So that's how like, I kind of got to elevate my game. Like I was going against one of the best offensive tackles in the nation, like every day. I would be lying if I say I won like a lot and like, no, this dude kick my ass like every day, like every day. We just knew that he was going to be a beautiful canvas to paint some art with. I was in essence basically just trying to destroy him and I wasn't trying to demean him like I did a lot of the other players. I had a purpose in what I was in essence trying to do with him. He was an Arizona kid, somebody that I knew I could take under my wing as a little brother, but I had to make him a little brother first. And this is going to be a touchdown. Terrell Sucks, his first of his career. For a guy to come in as a true freshman and really never really played the position before, but with, with no experience, um, how fast and how confident he played, right? Didn't always do the right thing, but like as far as like hey, I belong here, like I'm not intimidated. Like, I think to me is what really stood out. I really thought Arizona State coming off the 96 and 97 seasons when they went a combined 20 and four had a real opportunity to just become one of the powerhouses in the league. It just didn't happen. They were five and six that year, and then they ended up with back-to-back -back six and six seasons in 99 and in 2000 that ultimately led to Coach Snyder being let go. You don't know, as a 17-year-old, the responsibility you had to do in your part. You know what I mean? It wasn't Bruce Snyder's fault that the team didn't perform. You don't really realize and appreciate a guy like Bruce Snyder and really the type of leader he was until you start to experience other programs and then you go back and you're like oh okay like this is like who he was and why he was a special coach and then you kind of go into this off season like you know football isn't high on your priority because you don't know who's coming in here I had a desire to stay in the western part of the country. I'd recruited Arizona pretty much my whole coaching career, 
So I was really excited about, about the opportunities at Arizona State. Him being an offensive-minded coach, me being a defensive player, like it was really no relationship there at first. But um, I did develop a relationship with Ted Monacino, and it turned out to be one of the um, most defining relationships in my life. It ended up changing my life. Me and him develop a trust in each other. That's when the magic start to happen. He could have played anywhere on any team. I've never seen a room, a draft room that I've been in, that was so shocked to have a player available. Nobody knows this. Nobody knows this, right? 